Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about the warnings module in Python. I've talked about this previously in episode 320. I looked up. It will be in the description so you can watch that one as well. Uh, but I go over kind of the basics of warnings. We'll cover a little bit of the basics again, just so I can introduce the concept that I am telling you about today. Um, and I, I'm not sure how I missed this. Oops, sorry about the mic. Not sure how I missed this in the Python 3.12 video, but uh, the functionality that I'm showing you today was introduced in 3.12, and it is so close. It is so close to completely fixing the problem that I complained about in the previous video, but for some reason they didn't do the last, you know, last mile for it. Anyway, let's introduce warnings really quickly. So let's say that we had some sort of function, some func, and let's say that it used to take an argument B, uh, but we're now replacing it with an argument A. Uh, and so for some migration period, you might want to allow both of these, but issue some sort of warning for uh, if people pass in B. So you might do that like this. If B is not none, I guess you would probably do if A is not none, raise type error, uh, cannot supply both A and B, just to cut, cover your butt there. And you would raise a warning. So you'd say like warning stop warn, uh, B is deprecated, uh, not depreciated, deprecated. <laughs> and if you watch the other video, you'll know that you'll always have to pass back level equals two. Uh, I argue in the other video that this should absolutely be the default and I still stand by that. And uh, we're actually gonna show a thing where you don't need stack level equals two uh, and where the author of the feature definitely realized that this should probably be the default. But We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but anyway, you would then set b equal, or a equals b and continue with the function as normal. I don't know. Got a equals, yeah, I don't know. Silly function doesn't actually do anything, but this will show uh, the example here. And if you were to make a consuming module and say like import t and call t.sum func with, well, let's first do it with a just to show that there's no warnings when you don't pass it incorrectly, but if we pass the deprecated name with B, then you get a warning. Okay, I've shown nothing new so far. This should this should uh, be entirely review here. The important part about that stack level thing is it points the warning at the file where it gets called. So you can see here that it's pointing at u.py at line three. If I were to remove the stack level equals two, this is also still review, but <laughs> important to show the point. If I remove that stack level here, you'll see that it points at the call to the warning function, the warnings, warnings not warn, which is not very useful if you're trying to debug where you're actually making the mistake. You would have to then do I don't know, w, w error to turn it into a stack trace, then find the actual error looking. I find this mistake happens all the time in Python. And, uh, I wish this became the default, but that's that's that other video. That's the recap. Okay, the new feature that got added in Python 3.12 is this skip file prefixes. Now, the intention of this feature is for a case like this, where maybe you've deprecated this. Let's put that stack level back just so it's correct. Uh, let's say you've deprecated the B parameter in this function, but maybe you're in a library of functions and you compose other functions with other functions. And so something internal to your library may also call this. Let's say that you wrote, I don't know, some wrapper, which takes in all of its keyword arguments and does some special behavior beforehand. I don't know, begin wrapper. Uh, and then it calls some func with all of those keyword arguments. You'll notice a problem here if I go to our consuming module here and I call some wrapper with the deprecated argument. I'll move this out real quick. And if I run this now, you'll see that we're back to the same problem as before in that our warning blames the library itself for the warning. But really the problem originates in the user code and not inside of this t.py file. And that's where this uh, skip file prefixes argument comes from. The intention for this is to, uh, well, let's actually say that we are making some sort of a library. The intention for this is to, I'm gonna move it into my lib bug. Touch my lib, and init.py isn't needed here because of the namespace file, but let's demonstrate the problem completely here, and then we'll change this to from my lib import t. Okay, so the idea here is with this skip file prefixes argument, you can pass a tuple of strings, which will be ignored uh, as frames checked in the warnings if they match. 
bad explanation, but let me just show you in practice. So if you look at mylib slash t.py, we can say that all of the paths inside mylib are things that we don't want to warn on. We, we don't want to blame ourselves for the warning. We want the warning mechanism to find the first frame that is a caller. And so what you would do is say like skip prefixes equals os.path dot dir name of double under file. And this is this is a way to refer to the directory of this. You could also, you know, import mylib and do mylib.dumble under file if you wanted the data.py. This helps you manage all of your nested files, etc. Basically saying like these are the prefixes I want to skip everywhere. And this actually replaces, I think it replaces the stack level, but we'll actually look at the docs and see what it says there. But you can do skip file prefixes equals skip prefixes. Yeah, that fits on one line. Uh, did I spell it correctly? Is it prefixes? It's with an X. Not prefaces. Anyway. Um, and so now if we run this, uh, you'll notice that it is now correctly pointing at our u.py, despite how many levels we, uh, you know, called, called this via a wrapper and the deprecation warning still blames this particular file. And if we go to just the normal case where we uh, call the function directly, we're still blamed in the right spot, which is very good. This is how warnings should work. Uh, the thing that the, the, <laughs> the part where I'm like, they were so close to getting it right and so close to fixing my gripe is they even call out the specifics of this that uh, when you specify prefaces, prefixes, I don't know what the real word is, uh, stack level is implicitly overridden to be max to stack level. So they're, they're, they're so close to admitting that the default should be two, but alas, they don't. But anyway, uh, I guess when you pass that argument, it sets the default. But I think this is really cool, and it's a step step forward towards fixing the default of stack level, because um, one makes no sense. And I've said this so many times, but one one makes no sense here. This is this is my hill I'm going to die on. But this thing fixes it, at least in this particular case. Uh, now I actually rarely rarely use warnings, so I don't think um, you know I just haven't used this functionality for deprecating stuff. I have different approaches or different things that, that need to do. But uh, I, I think that this case will definitely help libraries that provide code. I guess, let me clarify. I don't use warnings much because I don't write libraries much. I tend to write tools instead. Um, but I, I think this functionality will help a lot in libraries. Unfortunately, we can't really use it until Python 3.12 is kind of the de facto minimum. But it's cool that the feature's there, and I'm excited for the future. Uh, anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.